Welcome back to Celebrity Radio. It's Alex Belfield talking to two of the country's biggest stars and two of my favourite people. Martin and Shirley Kemp have got a brand new album out called In the Swing of It. It's out now and I'm delighted to say they join us today. How are you guys? I'm very We're well. Wonderful. How Thank are you? you? I'm not bad for me age, but not as good as you, Martin. I mean, you've got the perfect life, really. You've got a beautiful wife. You've got a son who loves you. You've got it all going on, really. And so much to talk about. Congratulations. Thank you very much. I'm a lucky man. I'm telling you, you've both had incredible lives but let's start with you first Shirley I mean can you ever remember a time when your life wasn't extraordinary you've always been surrounded by completely incredible people haven't you I uh, yeah I, I mean not that I'm kind of expect like thinking oh I must find some in- extraordinary incredible people I just attract I, I, I like people who are honest with themselves who have found their passion in life and I love music, and that seems to draw some really nice people around me. Let's go back to the beginning. When did you first meet? Can you remember the first time? It was a, a theatre after show for a, a, theater, a show called Yakety Yak. It was all the McGann brothers. And I'd mm. gone to this show. I didn't dress up. I just thought, oh, I'm just going to the theatre. It'll be dark. No one will see me. I'll nip in and out. And then my friend said to me, David said, oh, you know, Spandau are here, Martin Kemp's here. So I'd fancied Martin and all my friends knew, so I didn't stop going on about it. And he said, I'll bring Martin over. And I was like, no, please don't bring him over. I'm not, I've not got no makeup on. I'm not got, I look horrible, please. And you know, when you can hear yourself panicking, not tonight, I can't meet him now. And then Martin's walking over and I'm like, it's too late. Uh, Here he is. He's walking towards me. But the thing I noticed was, Oh, no, he's got more makeup on than I have. He's dressed up to the nines in this big silk well, jacket. It, it was 1982. Was... It was the year of makeup for boys. New romantics. Pretty disappointed, I think, when yeah, you saw me. Yeah, I was like, oh, dear. I okay. think this is perfect, though, because, Martin, if you see somebody at the worst and you still fancy them, imagine what they're going to look like when they're all dolled up. That's what I say. That's, that's, what that's, I thought, that's yeah. exactly right. Listen, but Shirley <laughs> never looks bad. She always looks good. For both of you, we're going to get to the question next, which is the point you going to cut me off and say you're outrageous but I want to know what it's like to be a sex symbol because you're both I mean Mr (laughs) and Mrs Delicious been on people's walls for years but first let's talk about this new album I listened to it last night and it's quite extraordinary I mean of course Shirley completely out sings you Martin we all know this of course she does she's got a beautiful voice you know she said when we were in the studio she sounds like Doris Day you know she's great which uh which is one one of the reasons we wanted to take the whole swing thing on you know because uh Shirley his voice was just so perfect for it. But I yeah, love Martin's voice as well. I really loved when we put they, he, the producer put our voices together because I had no idea it'd work. And I just thought, wow, who knew that we would could blend our voices so well? No, it's quite lovely. And of course, it's got some bizarre choices on that are so wonderful to hear again. I mean, Buckley Square, which is just that classic, probably from the 20s or something like that. And there it is right at the beginning. Well, that song came around because, uh, you know, last year I did Chicago in the West End. And uh, it was the song that everybody used to warm up to you know, in the afternoon when you first turned up at a the theatre. And so, and I absolutely loved it because straight away it reminded me of me and Shirley on our first date, going and walking around the West End, you know, that feeling of you don't want to go home, the sun comes up, mm. that kind of vibe. And so when the whole, we were looking, started to look for songs, that was on the top of my list. I absolutely mm. love that song. It's like a love letter to London, isn't it, really? Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. You know, and all the songs that we chose were, were moments in our life. Like the way you look tonight was it was stuff that I said to Shirley over the years. You know, there's a line in it where I say, uh, and uh, that that when you smile, it wrinkles your nose. And Shirley has this line across her nose where where she's when she smiles. And so it, everything was kind of perfect. You do seem, I said at the beginning of this interview, to have a dream life, and I'm sure there's ups and downs and happiness and sadness and all of that stuff. But to find a best friend and a lover at the same time must be incredible, and especially in show business. Because when you're surrounded by people of, well, let's say great temptation, I mean, there's a lot of attractive people. I mean, you were in Chicago with my mate Maz Murray. They don't get better than that. That's right, Maz, yeah. And, and you know, yeah. all day long, you're there, there you are around people, yet you've still always stayed loyal to each other. How do you do that? You should write a book on that because it's not easy to survive show business sane. Uh, you have to have two things. You have to have love and then you have to have friendship. Would you ruin those those two things? Of course not. I wouldn't ruin a friendship with a, my best friend. And, yeah. and that's what it comes down to. 
and then there's another element. Then you have kids, and one of them becomes a bigger star than both of you. And there we are on the uh, radio listening to Roman, of course, in the jungle at the moment. You must be incredibly proud. In the first episode, he called you your, his hero, Martin. It doesn't get better than that. Oh, uh, listen, you know, Roman and I have a really lovely relationship. You know, we, we just... Um we're really close and you know you know me and Roman we we take the mickey out of each other uh, no end mm. like um uh you know you watched us on Gogglebox together recently mm. over the past few months and we just take, we banter with each other and we're just like best mates so I love him dearly and uh, I have to say you know when I was watching that episode and I was I was actually tucked up in bed at that point with a TV on in the bedroom and uh, it brought a tear to my eye when he said that. Mm. And of course the, the programme continues on Channel 4. It's obvious now it's going to be Martin and Shirley. Roman's going to be too big successful and busy. Uh, is there hope yeah. we could see you both sat there slagging off other celebs on TV? Yeah <laughs> well, well let's see. Let's see what happens. Ah okay we'll leave that there. Let's talk about back in the day and and I always love reminiscing. And of course, the biggest star in this country that people loved was George Michael. And not only did you get to work with him, you called him a friend. What a magical time that was for you. It doesn't get bigger than that era for both of you. But for you, Shirley, what a magical time. Yeah, I mean, I count myself very lucky that to me, he wasn't George Michael. He was just one of my best friends. He was like a brother to me. And, you know, sadly, you look back on your life and you think, wow, that was an incredible relationship I had. And I still feel so full of love about it. You know, I just look back and think I was I was just lucky to have experienced him and, and our relationship. So, uh, yeah, I mean, he's so dearly missed now, but. I just look back with just so much love. What is it like being famous and having other famous friends and then, of course, switching on the radio and hearing them? Nobody else has that. It must be peculiar because he still lives on today. I mean, the biggest film at the moment is Last Christmas. So we need we say more. Yeah. You know what? That makes me really happy because, because I knew him so well. I knew his real baby in the world was his music and the thing mm. that he wanted, that was his legacy. And that's why this Christmas, I just feel like it's, you know, a new Christmas for me because I feel like, wow, his music's coming out again. It's in a celebrated way. It's no, not, you know, anything negative around it. Everyone's celebrating. And that's, I know, because I, I know him, that's what he wants. He just wants you to enjoy his music. That was his, it's what he was here for. He always used to say to me, that's what I'm here to do. I'm here to make music. He didn't have any other agenda. It was, I want to make amazing music. And then we talk about your life on stage, of course. And what's amazing about it, Martin, is that global success. There I was just the other week driving through New York and you're on the radio there. Does that ever become normal when you switch your sort of car on in Barbados and there you are, whether you're in Spain, Bangkok or Bangladesh? Well, there you are. Do you there know you what? It's, it's a funny thing because the older you get, the more removed you are from that, kid you were you know I was like how old was I you know 20 22 when I was making uh, true and gold and so you know every seven years of a human being you've replaced every cell in your body and so we are completely different people and when I look back at those records I kind of get the same out of it as you do or as somebody else does you know they they're kind of like soundtracks of pictures in my heads of what was going on at that point but they I really I think I get the same amount of enjoyment as you do there's no difference you're not going to want this question but is there any hope we'll ever see the three of you back on stage doing those harmonies and that show again or is that done now I would love to think there is a hope but there's five of us in that band that all have to say yes at the same time. And mm. uh, if we can do that, it'd be great. And I'd be in there like a shot. But, um, you know, let's just keep our fingers crossed. Back to this new album. And what's amazing about it is, is you leave us with a bonus track of it's beginning to look a lot like Christmas, which it is as we sit here at the end of November. Did you ever think, let's say 20 years ago, all right, 30 years ago, that this could ever happen? Was it always a plan or is it just sort of happened by mistake? Absolutely happened spontaneously. I mean, I literally was told like a week before that I was going in the studio to even do this. So for me, I didn't even have enough time to even think about it. You know, just get the songs chosen quick and get in there and sing them. Um, if you'd have told me this, I wouldn't have believed you. But here we are, made an <laughs> album and I absolutely is so proud of it. 
it's sort of got that classic sort of cross buble Frank Sinatra feel. That's deliberate, of course, with it being a swing album. Yeah. Has this always been a favourite? Because, of course, with you, Martin, and of course you, Shirley, too, uh, with Pepsi, we, we've got all the pop stuff. So you wouldn't necessarily think a big band would be your natural home, but it does sound perfect. Well, you know, like I was, you know, my my mum and dad owned about six records. And when I was a kid, you know, we never had any money. And they were Frank Sinatra, Dean Martin, Ella Fitzgerald. And this, making this album for me, when it came around, it was a musical journey of discovery. It was a chance to look into swing and to, to buy all those records that my mum and dad couldn't afford and to find out what was on them and, you know, just discover it. And I, what I found is I absolutely love it so much, that sound. It's so big and so fulfilling when you play those records. That, and it's perfect Christmas music. This is something I have wanted to do since the 80s. I would, I've just feel so more comfortable with, with swing music and listening. I just love double bass and all the brass. There's just so much to it that I'm that you're listening to. You know, when I listen to the album, I'm listening to every detail of of instrument on there. It just feels so full, so feel good, so glamorous. It's got everything. So yeah, this is the type of music that I've dreamt of singing. And of course, you make me feel so young is the best track on the album, isn't it? Because that's the best swing song ever. <laughs> well, funny enough, that was the demo version. That was the first time I went into the studio with Martin when they said, bring Shirley in. And we said, Martin said, well, let's sing You Make Me Feel So Young. So we went in and we did a demo and producer Brian Rawlin just said, that is it. I'm keeping that demo. We're not changing that. He said there was so much magic because it's the first time we'd ever sung together. So I didn't know at that we neither of us well, knew at that point. Together, yeah, we, yeah, yeah. So neither of us knew when we were in the studio singing that that it it would have sparked this kind of whole album off. Well, I certainly didn't know. But you know, when you've been in a relationship as well, you know, going back to how true the songs are to us, when you're in a, lo a long relationship, you do make each other feel young. They, you yeah. know, because that you've grown up together, so you're always in your. You know, I always believe that everybody's brain stops when they're 28 and you're in that mode, you know. And uh, I think that's what happens in a long relationship as well. You stop at a certain point and you're always young. Congratulations on everything. The new album, Martin and Shirley, is out now. You can get it in stores and online. It's been so lovely talking to you both. Keep on keeping on, won't you? Thank you yeah, very much. Thank you so thank much. You.